Hey, good morning, everybody. Happy Wednesday to you. Mark again here, Weatherman Plus. Now, I'm going to give you the updates on what's going on in the tropics. Is what's been showing up in the last few runs on GFS is a bit concerning, but I'm going to show you the data. Remember, all the links are in the description to help save you time. Please use them if you're in a rush. Thank you for your time. If you've never been here before, make sure you subscribe. I am all year along. First of all, let's go through the tropics because it's still showing up on the latest runs on GFS as well. But remember, this is only showing up on GFS, guys. And when I show you the data, you'll understand it a little bit better. GFS is not really good when it comes to mixing around with dust, just like Euro is not real good when there's landfall interaction. Each model data has its own perimeters that really messes up the model runs. Now, just like I showed you yesterday, there is that pocket in between these plumes of dust where some formation could come out of these systems in the Caribbean. And yesterday on the 6Z run on the early morning, it did show something on GFS forming up right on the 16th and 17th. And it showed it going straight over to Yucatan, straight towards Mexico, a very strong hurricane. Which you can see right here on your precipital water, showing that it has a lot of precipitation in it, that the dust is not affecting it, and it just forms up really strong going towards Mexico. Now that has been the trend that it will go towards western Gulf of Mexico, and most likely into Mexico more than the states. But these model runs are pretty concerning, especially when there's a lot of dust that's heading into the Caribbean. Then the run immediately after the 12Z, which is usually the best data, the 12Z and the 0Z, that's when those balloons go up and get the best weather information, it showed an even more concerning storm to look at. It started around the 15th and 16th, which is literally about nine days away. And then it goes all the way through the Gulf, strengthening nonstop all the way down to 947 and goes all the way towards Texas, a very much major hurricane. And when you look at the precipital water, you can see why this is so concerning because it just goes right into the Gulf and we all know how strong the Gulf can be this time of year. And it just intensifies and brings catastrophic amount of rainfall towards the whole Gulf and affecting Louisiana, Mississippi, and especially Texas. A very nasty looking system. And it showed a crazy amount of strength. It showed all the way up to 123 miles per hour wind gusts with it. Just very much a catastrophic storm really early in the season. Even the 6Z early this morning shows the same thing. A little bit different because it showed a cold front coming and smacking it away from Texas but it showed it still strengthening towards the Gulf and curving towards Florida once again, which we all know with this dust coming in, this big high pressure, that would just be impossible. But let me show you the data and what I'm going by to show that this model run is not true. Matter of fact, I'm showing the Euro, matter of fact, is not true as well. I'm showing the Canadian has got it correct. But you can see with the precipital water that the cold front would come in and hit that away from Texas that's why it's showing in that model run that is turning towards Florida. But you can also see when you look at your Arctic Oscillation that how far away is talking about this cold front coming down. So this is pretty far in the model data for it to be even close to correct because it's already making changes around the 10th and 11th. That is way too far to be predicting or showing something confirmed as a hurricane coming or a cold front. Now, when you look at your MJO, your Madden Julian oscillation, according to the Euro, you can see that we do have this cold front that we are dealing with. And there is a chance for a cold front to bounce in real quick, right around the time that the GFS is showing. But this data part right here on the MJO always changes and is too far to be sure. Even though Euro is showing a quick cold front, that don't make this storm true at all. Now, when you go by the NASA satellite, which is a very accurate satellite, it's not the Euro, it's not the Canadian, it's not the GFS, this is a NASA satellite to look at the dust. And while we're looking at the dust, we can look at the precipitation that's in the area as well. And you can see that the dust does move in, and while we start getting this little churn right here, right around the 10th, it carries it continuously to the west, southwest, that's where it has to be suppressed, but you can also see as it goes to the west, and it goes right over the Yucatan, this is the first part of it, and it starts forming up to possible cyclone locations right around the Bay of Campeche, also right here on the eastern Pacific of Mexico. So these would be the two locations that you need to go by as 
something forming up as far as the model data. And if it don't match up to this, whatever outcome it has after that, I would not go by it. But you can also see when you look at the dust at the second one, it does not head to the north that it keeps getting suppressed by this second plume, even though you have this big area right here of not so thick of dust, you still have this big high pressure forming up and it's still blocking. And all this precipitation gets shoved to the south, southwest. It don't head north, it heads south towards the Pacific right over Honduras and Nicaragua. And for the runs on GFS to be correct, this would have had to make a northern track and not a southern track. So when you go to check and try and model it up with what NASA sees, you can see that when that system gets around the eastern Pacific, right around the 10th through the 13th, that there is nothing in the Bay of Campeche. So this is not forming up with what NASA satellite is seeing at all. So whatever comes after that don't even matter because it's already not matching up with the two systems. Even the latest run, the 6 z this morning, still does not match up with what NASA satellite is seeing. There's just the one system on the Eastern Pacific and it's not showing the one in the Bay of Campeche lining up with the one in the Eastern Pacific as well. So what comes after this, just you cannot go by because it's not even showing true already. But before you start thinking that the Euro is it, because Euro is good model data, it depends on what the data is. Euro is real good on reading the lift as well as the sinking air. But as far as the model runs, the data just isn't confirming what the NASA satellite sees as well. You see it shows the one in the Eastern Pacific. It shows it very weak and going to the West, but it's not showing neither one. It's only showing the one in the Eastern Pacific, just like the GFS. Now, when you go by the Canadian model, the GM model, you can see it does show the one in the Eastern Pacific like the Euro does see as well, but you can also see it does bring up the two, just like NASA is showing. And this is more likely the outcome because it's more consecutive with what NASA satellite sees as two consecutive, one on the Eastern Pacific and one in the Bay of Campeche. And the Canadian model shows that it will be something going towards northern Mexico. It would not be that strong storm that you see going towards Florida, towards Texas, that you've been seeing in the last few model runs. This would be more consecutive with what NASA satellite does see. But you can also see when you look at your potential velocity anomaly. This one's according to the GFS, and it does confirm that we have something strong coming from the 14th all the way to the 18th. But you can see right here that this is right over the Eastern Pacific going towards that first system that's going towards Mexico potentially, the one that the National Hurricane Center is picking up. After that, it's not showing anything all the way to the early 20s. This is your update. But at the same time, you're not seeing any of this sinking air that you see here. You're not seeing any of this dust before this system. And you're not seeing any of this dust after this system. And obviously, this is all in the Caribbean, very thick, and coming for quite some time. So even though I like GFS model because it is a long-range accurate model, one thing is not good with is the data with the dust. So once the dust goes, then you can pay more attention to the GFS. Euro is a great model as well, but when there's land interaction, it's a little iffy on the strength. So when there's no land interaction, Euro is what you want to go by. When there's no dust, you really want to start considering what GFS shows. But until then, you always go by the data or you always go by what's trending when the models do not agree. And so far, the Canadian model does agree with the NASA satellite. But just because the model runs, the data in the model runs on the Euro don't mean everything about the Euro is incorrect. It just has land interaction and it just needs to get tweaked a little bit, give it a few more runs when it gets off land and it will start showing some good data. Because you can see here on your potential velocity anomaly, according to the Euro, now not only does it show something weak, forming up in the eastern pacific i expect this to strengthen up a little bit because national hurricane center does have their radar on that system but you can see also that you have something coming off the mdr right around that time from the 15th through the 17th and you can see you're sinking air in between these two systems right here as well as all this dust that's coming after that with more trying to come off the mdr 
And you can see that shot best here. So as you go into the 16th and 17th, you can see you have a system coming off of the coast of Africa traveling through the MDR. So what you have is your system coming off, you have your sinking air in between, and then you have your system over here, just like you're seeing in a potential velocity anomaly according to the Euro. So even though the Euro model is not what I'm saying is true, but the data is showing true with what's up with the lift and what's up with the sinking air in the MDR in the Caribbean. So it does see that GFS isn't really good when there's dust interaction. So, so far what I'm showing the most likely outcome would be the Canadian so far. And you would bring a lot of precipitation towards Nicaragua and Honduras while you get something forming up over here by the Eastern Pacific going towards Central America and maybe even traveling all the way to Mexico. But this would be your most likely outcome. Also bringing heavy precipitation to the Yucatan Peninsula on the 14th and then going towards northern Mexico with that precipitation as well on the 16th. And then the rest of it that's forming up down here, getting suppressed, going to the west, southwest, just like we see with the NASA satellite. You can see that here as well. All the precipitation gets pushed through the gyre and starts forming up on the eastern Pacific, not what the GFS is showing. Now you can also see this on your global tropics. It has, has its latest update and you can see from June 8th all the way to June 14th, they are expecting a cyclone formation in this red area with heavy rainfall in this green area. And then when you go from June 15th all the way to June 21st, they're expecting a development of a tropical cyclone of tropical depression or greater strength in this region right here towards the Bay of Campeche, Western Caribbean, going towards Mexico, not going towards Texas, not going towards Florida. It's going to be more Southern. And that's what we see in the Canadian model. So if you want to follow which model so far would be your latest update of what can potentially happen, follow the GM model, CMC model, the Canadian model. It is the most accurate with NOAA. It's also the most accurate with the NASA satellite. So if you want to follow something, see what your potential impacts are, follow the Canadian. The Euro is a little too weak because there's land interaction. GFS is a little wonky because of the dust. It don't really see the dust as bad as it is. And you can see this here on National Hurricane Center. They have a five-day outlook for a 40% chance of a disturbance to form up right here going towards Mexico, not in the Bay of Campeche, not in the Gulf, nowhere, or Western Caribbean. And for the Atlantic side, within the next five days, there is nothing expected. But thank you so much for all your ideas as well. I did read y'all comments yesterday and they were perfect and very good information. It kept me pretty busy yesterday and it's gonna keep me pretty busy today, contacting people, driving out there, talking to people, trying to get something set up so we can feed some people. Cause that is a really good joy in my life. And I thank you all for the chance to be able to do that. God bless you all. Now today, I wanna to read to you a very beautiful Psalm. Praise our Lord, amen. Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flieth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee, to keep thee in all thy ways. 
They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder. The young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. <laughs> God bless you all today. I hope you have a very blessed day. I hope this eases your mind a little bit about the tropics. Trust me, the GFS model will catch up to the data and it'll start calming down. If there's any changes, I will inform you. You know I will. But I do appreciate all of you for visiting my channel today. Thank you so much for your time. And I hope you have a very beautiful Wednesday out there today. And remember, always, <laughs> all power, all glory does go to God, Yahweh, our God of Jacob our Father, and He always keeps us safe. Do not worry at all. Never fear. Fears of the devil. Always keep your faith in God. Amen! <laughs> Hallelujah! God bless you all. Have a very very great Wednesday today.